rep the 605 with Softball 605 Apparel from our clothing partner, Dakota Lettering. Just click on the store banner on the Softball 605 website to see a wide variety of styles and colors. Want more options? Visit the store for an almost unlimited variety. Softball 605 Clothing. Represent. Welcome Softball 605 to This Week on the Diamond. I'm Travis Lape. As you see, my guests or my co-hosts are all missing this week, so you're stuck with me. Uh, Carol is out in Wyoming with family, and Sandy's uh, down in Nationals with her softball team. So you've, you're stuck with me. Hopefully we'll get through this. Um, we've got an awesome interview coming up later on in the show with Brian Corey from Diamonds Crush. We'll cover everything from the national tournament from his team to kind of preparation for the next season because softball for fast pitch is starting to wrap up. Uh, um, but this week we've got a lot of things to cover from slow pitch uh, all the way to men's, men's fast pitch and, and women's slow pitch that, uh, that happens. So we'll jump right in right away. We've got the state slow pitch tournament starting this coming Saturday out at Sherman Park Complex here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So if you're around and want to see some slow pitch action, definitely come out, girls and boys, um, from 10U all the way up to 18U. They have 68 girls slow pitch teams that will be playing, and they have 28 boys slow pitch teams playing. And this is just a fa this is just a fascinating tournament because you get to see the girls and the boys playing at the same complex during the same tournament. It's hosted by the South Dakota ASA uh, Slow Pitch Association, and uh, our JO Commissioner Carol Pipgrass, who does both fast and slow, will be out at the complex uh, running the tournament. So definitely pop out there. Hopefully next week we'll have results from that tournament for you, but. A tournament that went on this weekend, one of the lone tournaments for basically fast pitch and slow pitch and then men's fast pitch, was the 42nd annual Joe Young Memorial Tournament. That happened up in Watertown at Cock Field. Uh, Gary Young was the tournament director there. 18 and under girls results. We have the Watertown Young Primetime Sports 9 over the Watertown Clawson Construction 2 in the championship game. So in that game it highlighted two Watertown teams and congratulations to Young's Primetime for winning the tournament in the 18 and under division. In the 14 and under division they had actually enough teams to make three different categories for championship Sunday. They had a gold division, a silver division, and a bronze division. So in the bronze division we had the Madison um, Fast Pitch team against the Sioux Falls SWAT. Madison came up on top 7-2. to two. Congratulations Madison. In the Silver Division we had the Watertown Extreme versus Marshall and the Watertown Extreme team came up on top 11-3. to three. Uh, Congratulations again to the Watertown Extreme. And in the Gold Division we had two Sioux Falls teams. We had the Sioux Falls Fusion against the Diamonds Fury and the Sioux Falls Fusion came up on top 12-4 to four. and that's the result for the 14 and under girls division. In the 10 and under girls division, there was only two teams, so they played a uh, best of three uh, game, and the Brookings uh, 10 and under girls fast pitch team was, uh, came up on top over the Watertown Van Lacken Orthodontics, so congratulations to the Brookings team. In the men's fast pitch division, we had the Young Primetime Sports in the championship game against Ramona, and Young Young's Primetime Sports came up on top 12 to 3. And then in the slow pitch, we had one division, an 18 and under girls slow pitch division. In the championship game, we had Frankfort Intimidators against the Watertown Krauss Construction, and then the Intimidators won 6 to 4. So, congratulations, Frankfort, um, on your championship. That was a busy tournament. A lot of teams up there with the 42nd Joe Young Memorial Tournament. And Watertown definitely showed their colors of fast pitch and slow pitch in that tournament, being able to come victorious in several divisions. So congratulations to all teams that played up there. And um, definitely heard great things from that tournament. And the weather was nice, and it cooperated for, for a great weekend of games. And that would really was the the tournaments that we had results for. I know there was another slow pitch state tournament that happened up in Huron, um, but the results were not quite posted on the state ASA website. So definitely make sure to check that out um, as the results will come live. Um, probably this week still. Gary's probably working on that right now for us um, to get the results up. So the state slow pitch tournament, uh, women's slow, slow pitch tournament up in Huron was not um, not filled out 
the bracket was not filled out yet. Um, this week we also have several local fast pitch teams that are off at nationals. And so if you're watching this from, from your national tournament, we wish you the best from Softball 605. But we also ask you to help us out and get the results to us. Either tweet us or Facebook us or find us on um, Instagram and share pictures with us of, of your experience down at nationals. And then make sure to have a parent or a coach email carol at softball605 and get us the results because the faster you can get us the results, the faster we can give uh, basically shout outs to your team about the results that are happening from wherever you are in nationals. We know we've got teams down in Iowa, we've got teams down in Kansas City, and we've even got some teams out in California. So we wish all our teams the best of luck uh, in, this, in the national tournaments that they're playing in. We also have a really special guest coming on here after the break. We'll be talking with Brian Corey from Diamonds Crush. He is, he is just excited to be on the show with us today. We're excited to talk with him about their national tournament experience. They just got back last week from a great experience up in Egan, Minnesota, and we'll hear from Brian after these words from our sponsors. You've worked hard all year. I need you to bring it, dig down deep today. Because today, everybody plays. Everybody plays. Everybody plays. Everybody plays. Play. When we first learned to work together, it was through play. We learned social skills, give and take, freedom and teamwork through play. There's no age limit on play, no skill level required. Played against sports knows play. We buy and sell new and quality used sports and fitness equipment for less. So everybody can play. Sports. Play it again, sports. Play it again, sports. The official sponsor of all those that play. Hey, welcome back, Softball 605. Just like we told you right before the break, we are going to be joined by Brian Corey here. He is the coach of the Diamonds Crush. Yes. And you guys just got back from Nationals. Where did you go, and, and how was the week for you? Yeah, now we went up to Egan, Minnesota for the NAFA Midwest Nationals. Okay. Um, went up on a Wednesday, started playing Thursday, and uh, played through Sunday's championship bracket. So it was a great experience for our girls. Absolutely. When you guys got up there, what, what was kind of the atmosphere of Nationals? Because each Nationals does things a little different right. um, and going up to NAFA have you guys had you guys played in the turn in this tournament before mm -hmm. um, and what were some of the festivities that went on yeah yeah we played last year as our first experience so everybody was kind of doe-eyed wide-eyed and uh, a little bit nervous when we went up last year uh, this year we came up with uh, determined to do better than we did last year uh, very festive environment it's a great experience uh, nice diamonds there's 98 teams up there uh, in the 12 u bracket competing and uh, girls are very excited we uh, started playing on Thursday, won our pool, um, so that put us into the Platinum Division, which is the championship bracket, and, and over the weekend we went 7-2, and two, uh, came in fifth out of 98 teams, wow. and it was a great experience. Girls were very excited. Where, where were some of the teams that came into the tournament from, or teams sure. that you played? Yeah, we, uh, there's teams from Illinois to Minnesota and Iowa, South Dakota. I mean, they're kind of all over. Um, we played teams from, we played the Mankato Peppers, uh, out of Mankato, of course, White Bear Lake. Uh, Apple Valley, uh, just trying to think all the different teams. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience, really good teams. Uh, Shan Hassan had a very good team, uh, actually nipped us on Sunday. Oh. Um, but it was a great experience. Absolutely. Um, looking back on your season and kind of how things have gone, where, where would you put this team? Um, because this this is their first year up in the 14s? or uh, This is our this second, second year as 12s. 12, so you'll yeah. be moving to 14s. Yeah, yeah. Um, where would you put this ranked on this team's development and where they got at the end of the year? Yeah, you know, we started out um, with a pretty good, with a good foundation. I mean, we had um, just one change in player. Uh, we added a new player, um, and that was a great experience. And you, know, you never know what you're going to get when the season starts. Right. You always have these grand ideas. But uh, we had a great team. They worked hard, uh, put a lot of time in on the off season, a lot of time outside of practice, uh, really developed into a really a fundamentally sound team. And the girls are just, I mean, really became a family. Absolutely. Who are some of these young ladies that you're kind of speaking of um, 
from your team? Do they go to school together, or are they kind of mm -hmm. coming from all over? Yeah. Um, what does what does the makeup of the team look like? Yeah, you know, we a lot of the girls on our team, probably about half our teams, they all started softball together when they're six. Oh, that's so awesome. we've been together since then. Through the years, we've added a couple girls. Um, seems like every year we'll add one or two girls because girls, you know, interests change um, mm -hmm. as as with all kids. Um, but most of them are on the west side of town and in the central part of Sioux Falls. So uh, they're kind of about two different groups of where they live, and and it's blended blended together very well. Absolutely. You know, and it's it's early. They're 12. They're they're moving their first year in the 14s. But is there? Do you see aspiration from your team or some of the players on your team mm -hmm. that want to get to that next level and play at that college level at, at some point? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, they, they're getting to the point now where they're starting to look ahead a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, high school certainly is probably the thing they look at most, but we got a couple girls on our team uh, that certainly are looking to that college route and, and doing a lot of things outside of practice, which you need to do at this right. age Absolutely. Um, to get to that level. And, you know, a couple of them have a pretty good shot, I think. Ooh, awesome. You know, you said a lot of your girls are on the west side, so mm -hmm. is that, I mean, will they funnel into Roosevelt then? Will they be probably a nucleus for Roosevelt's program coming up, or or do some of them open and roll? Yeah, no, I think uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of them that will come into the Roosevelt program, a lot of Memorial girls. Okay. Um, and I think you're going to see some of them uh, making some noise for Roosevelt as they get into the high school. Same token is we're going to also have a pretty good presence uh, with the Lincoln High School. That's uh, awesome. So it's going to be fun. I mean, they're going to, I mean, they, a lot of these girls play together for the last six years, <laughs> seven years, and by the time they get to high school, it'll be 10 years, and now right. all of a sudden they'll be competitors. But. Absolutely. And that's kind of what's fun about the, the high school season is, is that all these summer teams play together, the yeah. girls have been together, and then high school season gets there, and now they're, they're enemies or they're opponents, you know, and they've got to play against each other, and yeah. the dynamics is just fun to see them compete um, with different with different coaches and different teams. Yeah. Oh, it is, and it's good for them. It's a good experience to get different coaching philosophies. It's just those high school games I have to go with, uh, those dual-cut jerseys <laughs> where I'll have Lincoln on one side, Roosevelt on the other, but absolutely, will be fun. Yeah, no. Um, Brian, going forward here into the fall, what is some things that you hope mm -hmm. um, that you guys set up as a team uh, to make sure that the girls are staying active and staying mm -hmm. busy? Um, and then maybe even talk about, because we've talked about this on Softball 605 a little bit, about um, dual sport athletes. Right, exactly. Um, and your philosophy maybe on, on that. Um, do yeah. you support it? Do you not? And, right. and where do you stand? Oh, yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, we're kind of a firm believer that you have to take time off from softball to be good at softball. Um, if we play it 12 months out of the year, you, you get injured. You get overuse injuries. Um, you get worn out of the game. I mean, it's it, it's a condensed season. When we start in uh, April, excuse me, for as far as playing games, until July, I mean, we're playing 55 games in, in two and a half months. Uh, those girls need some time off to, uh, to recover, and, and we strongly promote our girls to do multiple sports, um, whether it's basketball, and, and a lot of our girls are in soccer, and a lot of them are in volleyball. Those skill sets translate into each other. Absolutely. Um, they're much better softball players if, if they're involved in other sports, so we promote that heavily. Absolutely. So now you take a break. The girls will kind of start mm -hmm. start school here later on. Um, when do you guys start back up? When do you start sure. getting the team kind of together? Do you use the off season more as kind of a, a break, but also a fundraising time for your team? How does that structure all look for you? No, that's good. And actually, when we're coming back from nationals, one of the girls texts us, asked when the next softball practice was. <laughs> like, not very soon. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we'll get together uh, as a team in a couple weeks and kind of have our end of the season uh, events and just make sure who's you know who's all coming back next year. As far as uh, if you know, like I said, sometimes interests change. But we'll you know last year we played at the Boo Fest, which is a tournament down in Lincoln in October. Um, we'll talk about doing that again, and if we do that, then of course there'll be some practices ahead of time. But we'll we'll really start kicking it hard around that first of January or, or December. That's that's really when we start our our main training. Absolutely. Um, just to kind of talk about maybe just some certain players, mm -hmm. your pitchers, your catchers, kind of yeah. are the ones that really have to put in a lot of off-season time work just to continue mm -hmm. to develop their skills. Um, your pitchers at 12, what are what are you seeing work for them to get to that 14U level next year? Oh, what sure. are some things that have to develop for them in the off-season? Yeah, we've been really fortunate. Our two pitchers are Shayla Tushin and, and Taylor Rock. Um, these are two girls that are very dedicated to become better players. Uh, they have pitching coaches that they work with um, through the season. Uh, we do 
a lot of that within our team. We have a, a pitching coach that we have that works with the girls, but then they also do it on, uh, on their own time too. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that, the fundamentals that they learn through that, I mean, we can take them as coaches to right. a pretty good level, but when you have somebody that's a one-on-one -on -one coach like that, that specializes in pitching, uh, and you saw it, I mean, they were good pitchers last year, but they became very good pitchers this year. Just the dedication really showed on the mound. Absolutely. And we live in such a rich environment of in Sioux Falls here where there are a lot of mm -hmm. um, specialized coaches or college coaches that are willing to give up their time yeah. to work with kids. Yeah. Um, it's just reaching out to the right people and, and mm -hmm. saying, hey, I need, you know, I need hitting lessons or I need some pitching or catching lessons and, yeah. and the people are here to support our kids. Yeah, it is. And, and that's kind of been a component we added last year to our program uh, is that we do work with uh, one of the local coaches, uh, college coaches, and she comes in and works with our hitters and then also has worked with our pitchers extensively and it's it's a huge impact to the program the girls love it because they're getting this uh, <laughs> right. you know college coach yeah. how do you not like uh, having a college coach come into practice <laughs> right um, and so that that's helped out a lot absolutely mm -hmm. you know I, I think back to when I was when I was coaching just travel team stuff it, it, it's it's just nice to have a, a, a different perspective come in it's it's not you it's not it's not degrading you as a coach to bring somebody else in to no, to run know. your practice or run your hitting time um, really it just it really benefits fits the entire body at B of, of your team because of that. Oh, exactly. I mean, it's, I, I think as a coach, if you think you know it all, then you probably should stop coaching. All right. um, and so the advantage of bringing in these college coaches uh, who are very skilled and they work great with these girls, um, you know, that's what they do. And so I learned from it. Um, and it's amazing how if I say something that my girls don't listen, but when she says something, all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it, yeah, that fresh, that fresh viewpoint is great. And, and our other coach, obviously our head coach is Kim Corey. Yep. who has an extensive softball background so it works out great when, when those two are leading the practice. So speaking of your assistant coaches and then even the head coach um, Kim Corey, um, what's the dynamic, what are the roles on the team for the coaching mm -hmm. staff and, and kind of what, how do you divvy that up? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, I probably do a lot of the organization, you know, scheduling the tournaments, uh, making sure things are, 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 are on time and, and those kinds of things, you know. Kim's a head coach. She's certainly on the technical side of it. Yeah. Um, when, you know, when the girls were younger, uh, I could certainly be there helping them uh, with the fundamentals, but at this point, she sees see things that I'll never see. So um, she's on the technical, and then Ryan Rock and Dan McDonnell uh, are two of the other assistant coaches that help us make sure that, uh, you know, things are on track. And you stay kind of busy because not only do you have a softball team but you have a baseball team as well yeah 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 Sioux Falls Venom yeah yeah. <laughs> so, yeah has that has that season finished or is that kind of just no we ended uh the weekend of the same weekend as a state tournament for okay. softball so that was kind of a weekend where uh, my youngest daughter plays on impact diamonds impact so they were done that weekend my son was done and then uh my daughter's done this week and my older daughter so yeah so softball now is is all done no more tournaments and now yeah. it's just kind of rest time before yeah. kind of the fall season are you coaching middle school softball this fall or you know i don't do any of the middle school coaching it's, okay. it's kind of time for me also to kind of recharge so yeah. i take this time off um and then when we get back with crush um you know then i'm focused on them and and, and ready for the season so absolutely yeah well softball 605 uh, Brian, I just want to thank you for stopping in today, yeah, just kind of chatting with us about the national tournament, but also the, kind of the world outside of softball once the season ends, you know, yeah. we, we kind of forget that the girls do need that break and that rest oh, time, definitely. and you kind of highlighted the structure that you have, and I think mm -hmm. I think it pays off. I mean, I think your girls come back ready, rejuvenated, and wanting to play in January, yeah, rather yeah. than kind of burning them out over this time. Yeah, exactly, and, and that's where, like, when you go in the, the, I mean, this time of the year, I mean, you have the U trip state tournament, you have ring neck, you have the SA state tournament, you have the, the different national organizations, and if your kids are worn down and they're burned out and they're hurt, well, that's the prime time of the season, so right. yeah, you got to rest them. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us today yeah, on Softball thanks. 605. Appreciate we'll be back. Uh, here's a message from our sponsors, and we'll wrap up today this week on the Diamond. Bergen Bytes has a huge supply of refurbished electronics. They're a Microsoft authorized refurbisher. Just look at this. Computers as low as $100 and a wide variety of electronics, all so affordable. Look at these deals. A Dell 4-core laptop, fully tested, only $200. A MacBook, fully tested and ready to go, only $200. Subscribe to the Bargain Bites YouTube channel and get all sorts of great tips from super technician Brendan. Bargain Bites. 
just east of the airport off Benson Road. Visit them today online at bargainbites.net. Getting recruited by college coaches is more difficult every year. There are thousands of other athletes competing for your position. MyPlayerPage.com is the best place for athletes to showcase their personal and player information. Check us out today at MyPlayerPage.com. Any sport, any athlete, any state, any city, champions all. Welcome back, Softball 605. Thanks for uh, tuning in, coming back and seeing us after the interview with Brian. It was great just to catch up with him and see how his team finished. Um, what a finish for that Diamonds Crush team to finish in the top five out of 98 teams up in Egan, Minnesota. So congratulations again, Diamonds Crush, on a great season. We wish you the best uh, moving forward in your off season. Brian really highlighted some great things as coaches to remember that uh, it is okay to give your girls a few weeks off and give them some time just to get away from the Diamonds in the game and rest their bodies and heal any wounds that they may have encountered throughout the season. The other thing that I thought uh, Brian touched on pretty well that uh, we sometimes forget about, especially in South Dakota here, as, as more um, specialized sports are happening, um, it's okay to have dual sport athletes. It's, it's, it's really good to actually have them uh, because it, it works different muscles and really strengthens the athlete all around. And so um, when you're thinking about should I go out for volleyball or should I go out for basketball, uh, uh, you, you'll find a lot of coaches that will support that because of the this, this practice and the muscles that you use in those in those sports will just come back to only benefit you when you get back on diamonds to start playing fast pitch softball. Looking forward to this upcoming week of tournaments. Uh, we've got a few on the docket here. We've got the Cubbies Men's Slow Pitch Tournament, which will be held up in Brookings this weekend. So definitely, um, if you're in the Brookings area, tune in to, to the games up there. Also, make sure to send your results in for us so that we can highlight uh, the champions next weekend, uh, next week on this week on the Diamond Show. Uh, the South Dakota ASA Women's Slow Pitch, they'll also be having a tournament up in Mitchell. And this one will consist of Divisions 1, 3, 5, and 6, and this one will be played up at the Mitchell Complex this com upcoming weekend. And then we've talked about it a little bit already, but we have the South Dakota ASA Slow Pitch Tournament here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota at Sherman Park. We'll have 68 girls teams and 28 boys teams competing for the right to be crowned the 2015 ASA Slow Pitch Champions. So we wish all those teams the best of luck. And then the exciting thing here is in two weeks, we will have the ASA Northern B 18U National Tournament here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. If you're if you're looking to get out to see some really good softball, fast pitch softball for the season, this will be the last tournament prior to the high school season kicking off, and that will be here at Sherman Park. So we definitely encourage you to get out and see those teams. We'll have teams from Minnesota, South Dakota. We hope to have teams from Nebraska, North Dakota, and Iowa. Uh, even some teams possibly from uh, Illinois and Wisconsin coming in to compete to be crowned the Northern B champions there. That tournament will start on Thursday and run Thursday through Saturday and Sunday will be a rain out day so if there's any rain during the tournament they'll push that back and play on Sunday. But that is in two weeks. So next week on This Week on the Diamond Show, we will have a special segment talking about the 18U National Tournament that's coming to town and hopefully have some local coaches on our show next week that are um, playing in that tournament just to kind of highlight their team and what they hope to accomplish at that tournament. We also have a unique opportunity with our slow pitch tournament, we have the 18 or the 10 U through 18 U ASA National Tournament, which will be held up in Watertown at Cock Complex. Uh, again, that that is in two weeks as well, and that is the ASA National Slow Pitch Tournament that will be coming to South Dakota, up in Watertown. So we wish all of our South Dakota teams good luck. They'll be all vying for that bid to get to the national tournament up in Watertown this coming weekend at our state tournament. So a lot at stake for our South Dakota team to stay locally and get to play in their own national tournament. 
Fast forward a few weeks into August, we've got some things coming up here with the middle school and high school season just around the corner. Just a few things Softball 605 wants to make sure that all of our viewers have that information correctly. Um, you can get information about the middle school sign up and how to sign up for middle school fall ball at www.sdfallsoftball.org. So again, if you're looking for information about middle school fall ball and how to get your daughter signed up for that, definitely go visit the www.sdfallsoftball.org website to get more information in the registration form. That registration form and registration deadline will be fast approaching and we'll have more information on Softball 605's website of when that deadline is. So definitely make sure to either check our website out to get to the link or get on that website and print off a registration form. High school, if you're interested in playing high school uh, fast pitch softball for the high schools, you'll just have to check with your local high school um, to find out who the coach is and when that information meeting will be happening because each high school sets their dates differently. On top of that, Softball 605 is really excited to be announcing a special area on the Softball 605 website just for high school and this site is just up as of today and the pages will be continuing to be developed. This is where you'll be able to get more information about high school uh, fast pitch but also um, when, when we have this week's diamond um, game of the week hosted there you'll be able to tune in there and catch the live stream of that game that's another exciting part of softball 605 is the ability for us to bring the game of softball to the masses and to our viewers and so during the fall season we will be doing that by highlighting one to two games a week to put out on the on our stream that will highlight each of our um, teams in south dakota so definitely be tuning in to softball 605's website to get more information and to learn more about um, how Softball 605 uh, is, is hopefully helping the sport of softball by bringing the information to our viewers across the state from all of our teams. Uh, we will also have a big announcement probably next week for the third through fifth grade fall ball. Uh, the Sioux Empire Fast Pitch Softball Association used to run that league, but due to just time restraints and the ability to run that league, uh, the league has now looked to partner with another um, group and that announcement will come out either later this week um, but we'll also highlight it on uh, next week's show. So definitely tune in next week to, to learn more about the partnership and what's happening with Sioux Empire Fast Pitch as they, as, as they move forward with their fall ball and clinics that will be coming up in the fall here. Again, make sure to join us on softball605.com to get your latest information. You can join us at Facebook, Softball605, on Twitter, at Softball underscore 605, Instagram, at Softball605, and again, tournaments that are happening this weekend, please, please, please get your results to carol at softball605.com so that we can talk about your teams and your results and how your teams did over the weekend because, again, this is about South Dakota softball, and so we want to know about teams in Rapid, teams in Watertown, teams in Sioux Falls, even teams in the middle of our state that are playing right now and competing for championships. We want your information and the only way we can get that is if you send that to Carol at Softball 605. Join us next week on This Week on the Diamond. We'll have the results from this past weekend's tournaments as well as highlights We'll have a highlight section of the 18U National Tournament. For Softball 605, I'm Travis Slape. You are Softball 605.